Hi, I'm Cameron, a professional potter, and I'm here today to teach you how to make a jewelry holder. This is something I make in my own studio by throwing them on the wheel, but we're gonna make a version at home using your air drying clay and a pinching technique. So the basis of this jewelry dish is a pinch pot, but this time we wanna go more outwards than upwards. So I'm gonna start with a bit of a larger circle. And I'm just going to start by bringing my thumb downwards into the middle of the pot. So you can see straight away it's going to form a bowl and that's going to form the basis of our jewellery dish. So I'm just going to use my thumb to smooth down the clay and give it a bit of a compress, making sure not to push it entirely flat. So there we are, we have the makings of a nice dish. If you want to leave it as it is, this would be perfect for earrings or coins or keys or anything you want to leave on the sides. You can also think about using a more organic shaping method by distorting the clay with your thumb and finger to make it into a less circular shape. I'm just gonna compress the rim a little bit and just make it a little neater. You can use water for this step if the clay is cracking at all. So you could leave it as it is at this stage, but we're gonna add the, the ring column to make it similar to this design. So we'll take a little more of the clay from our bag and we're just gonna start rolling it out into a snake. So we want that cool about the width of our finger so that it'll fit our ring and we're gonna cut it roughly to size. The next step is to add the taper. And I'm gonna do this by rolling again like a coil, but I'm gonna add more pressure to one end than the other, which should form it into a triangle. So let's attach it to the dish base. As per usual, we're gonna be slipping and scoring. So I'll just work out roughly where I want it on the dish. I'm then gonna apply downward pressure, trying not to distort the finger shape. At this point, we can also use the modeling tool and just force the clay down into itself. So it might not look super neat at this point, but we want to prioritise getting it properly attached over how it looks, because we're always going to come back and clean it up afterwards. We'll add some slip around the base just to help everything come together, and then use the snake to blend the two pieces together. I'm going to add a foot ring onto the piece, so this just gives it a little bit of extra height and gives it a more elegant feel when it's sitting on your desk. So the foot ring is simply just a coil that's added to the base of the piece and then smoothed in. So once again, we'll roll out a coil, maybe just under a centimetre thick, chop it off, and we'll form it into a donut, and just push the two pieces into each other. At this point, we just want to combine the two together. If your clay is quite wet and you're struggling with distorting it, feel free to let it dry for between an hour and two hours, and then you can attach the pieces together. So we'll just do a test fit, and take a look from the side to see how it looks. I'm just going to work out where it's going to sit on the base, roughly mark it out, and then score. We'll add some slip to the scored area and we'll place the ring onto the scored area. We'll use a little pressure just to help it stick and then we can work it in with the sculpting tool. And there we have the foot ring. To get the best possible finish, we're gonna use a lightly dampened sponge and just smooth back the clay. And the last thing to do is check the alignment. So we have the piece we just made and then we've also got one that's been drying for about three days now. What I'd really like to do is try and match the piece that I make in my studio. These are glazed in the kiln, so they've got a lovely blue colour and a nice glossy finish. So we're going to try and replicate this using the included acrylics and the varnish, which should give us a very similar end result. What I'm going to do is just do a very light coat. We don't want to go crazy at this point and put loads and loads of paint on. You're better off doing a couple of thin coats than one thick one. So the acrylic not only adds colour to the piece, it's also going to add a bit of water resistance and just help the clay stay together. So you should try and finish every piece you do with painting. So after about 10 or 15 minutes of drying, you can still see there's a little patchiness in the first layer. That's to be expected, so we're going to add one more thin coat and then we'll blend it all together. 